Just for the heck of it, I'm gonna polish this carburetor to a mirror shine. Now, I'm not usually a fan of polished aluminum, but I think it would look cool on this carburetor. Now, it's been about 10 or so years since I brought aluminum to a chrome-like finish, so bear with me as I knock off the rust. So there's a few things I wanna pull off just to make the polishing process a little bit easier. Mainly the choke, a few of these screws, and the cable guide up on top. This is what I'll be using to knock out the polishing. Just got a little electric Dremel tool along with the accessories it came with and then a crap ton of other polishing supplies I've had around the shop. All right, roll up your sleeves, boys. It's about to get dirty. The first attachment I'll be trying out is this little cloth wheel. And also supplied in the kit was the stick of polishing compound. And with any grinding or polishing project, you gotta wear a respirator. I'm starting to realize this is gonna be a ton of work, a lot more than I was hoping for. It wouldn't be bad just polishing out the float bowl, but the carburetor body itself would need to be sanded down because it's got this casting texture on it, and all that would need to be knocked down in order to polish it out to a mirror shine. So what I'm gonna do instead is pull the carburetor completely apart, polish the float bowl and the throttle cap, and then Cerakote the carburetor body. This should look pretty cool. Now I've got the carburetor completely apart. It is gonna be so much easier polishing out the float bowl and throttle cap over on the buffing machine. First off, I'm gonna clean up these two pieces with the Scotch-Brite wheel. And what this is gonna do is remove some of the scratches, smooth out the finish, and get it ready for the first stage of buffing. I've got some ridges here on the edge of the football and some deeper scratches that I'm gonna take care of with the sanding drum. The first stage of buffing will be with what they call a sewn wheel and a triply compound. Thank you. 
So the wheel I was using earlier, this one right here, actually is not a sewn wheel. This one on the buffer is indeed. I came across it in the cabinet and it seems to work a lot better, a little more aggressive. After the first stage, this stuff is starting to take shape, but you just wait until the final stage is done. And that will involve using a loose style wheel along with a white rouge. Not bad at all. Just gonna clean up some of this buffing compound, maybe touch it up a little bit, and then call it good. Well guys, I am gonna have to call that done. Polishing definitely is not my strong point. These things did not turn out quite perfect. But you know what? It was a fun little challenge, and I think it'll still look pretty cool all put together. Next on the list is prepping the carburetor body for Cerakoting. If you guys wanna see the entire Cerakoting process explained in a video, just click the circle right up here in the corner. So basically the Cerakoting process is first starting out by soaking it in acetone for 30 minutes, then sandblasting it, followed up with a preheat at 300 degrees for a full hour, then spraying out the Cerakote, and then curing the Cerakote back in the oven for another hour. Since there's a few areas I do not want to sandblast or Cerakote, I'm going to have to do some masking here. That was actually a lot of masking. I don't know why, I've always enjoyed masking though. Next up is sandblasting. I went ahead and touched up some of the masking since parts of it were peeling up from the sandblasting and I wanted to get all the sand out of the inside of the carburetor. One thing I need to do before I run this part through the oven is cut some slits here in the masking tape. That way it doesn't shrivel up in the oven. All right, I've got the carburetor hanging and it's ready to go into the oven for the preheat process, which will burn off any remaining oil and residue. This is what it looks like when you don't cut enough of a relief into the masking tape. It'll shrivel up in the oven. Once I fix this, it'll be ready to spray. Uh oh, as I was masking, I noticed there's some oil or some sort of residue coming out around these screws. So that's an indicator there's still some oil or something left in the material. And that'll have to be removed before I spray. So I'm gonna wipe it down with acetone once again and then bake it in the oven for another hour. Now I've got a lot of oil coming out of these screws, so I'm just gonna pull them out and re-clean the whole carburetor completely. Ugh, frustrating. I'm actually glad I went through and pulled this thing apart a little further. Now I know 100% there's not gonna be anything leaking out and ruining that Cerakoting. So now I just need to soak it in acetone, mask it off again, and then preheat it in the oven and it should be all ready to spray after that. Finally, the carburetor gassed out fine and there are no signs of any oil residue. 
Time to mix up some Cerakote and spray out the carburetor. So I've got two Cerakote colors here, a burnt bronze and a tungsten, and I'm having a tough time deciding between the two. I know I can't go wrong either way, but just hard to know without having an actual part sprayed out with either color in front of me. Hmm. I'm thinking for this carburetor, a bronze is gonna stand out more. The tungsten is kind of like a charcoal color, so it's not gonna be like that far off of what color it is already. So I'm just gonna go with the bronze. All right, I've had the carburetor in the oven for an hour now, and it should be all cured and good to go. Check that thing out. For you guys that love the look of Cerakote and want some work done, make sure you get a hold of Clayton over at Trick Engineering. Super good guy, he'll set you up with some really good pricing and work. I'll put his info down below. All right, I've got the carburetor in a million pieces, and it is now ready to go back together. Thankfully, All Balls Racing sent over a carburetor rebuild kit, and it looks like it's got everything I need to completely overhaul the carburetor. All right, let's get this thing back together. A lot of times my projects don't really go to plan. Throughout videos, things will come up, I'll have to shift things around, but there's always a workaround. I just hate giving up on a plan or a project. But with this carburetor, I think it would look pretty cool, I'll polish it out, but it should look even better with the Cerakoted body and polished float bolt and cap. We'll see how it turns out. So it should be pretty straightforward bolting this carburetor back together. The only thing I'm going to walk you through is setting the float height. So how I'm gonna check the float height on this carburetor is by setting it level and letting the floats extend to their full length. So there they are, extended all the way out. And then I'm gonna let the floats return to the resting position. So right there. So it's not pushing in the needle or the valve, just resting right up on top of that plunger. So when I push the floats down, that is compressing the plunger on the needle valve there. So we want it resting right up on top. So I'll do that once again. So right there, it's at its resting position. And if you can see, there's a line on the floats here. That should be parallel with the float bowl line right here on the carburetor. So when the floats are in their resting position right there, we need those two lines parallel. So this one is just slightly off. And to adjust that, I'm gonna bend the tab on the floats just a little bit. So in order to get the floats level with the float bowl surface, I'm gonna have to bend this tab right here, the tab that the needle valve is hanging from. I'm gonna bend that up just a smidge. It really doesn't take much to make an adjustment here. All right, now let's check it again. So that is looking pretty parallel right there. I'm gonna call that good. So if your float level is too high, meaning it's right about there, you'll need to bend that tab down instead of bending it up. Setting your float height is something you definitely should not skip. If your float height is off, it'll pretty much nullify any jetting changes and it'll really affect the way the bike runs. So get it right the first time.
If you guys would like to support what I'm doing with this channel, I actually just got some more stickers in stock. Head over to PrimeMX.com and grab your stickers. So All Balls provided a new needle with this kit and I'm going to go ahead and set the clip position in the same spot as the original one. So this one is one down from the top and how this works is if the clip is farther down that will richen it up and farther up will lean out the bike. A lot of times new o-rings don't really want to stay in a place so applying a little bit of grease will help that out and this is where the mini grease gun really comes in handy I can put the grease exactly where I need it I'm gonna put a couple dabs on this cover here Of course, I'm going to have to pop the cap off to get the throttle cable on, but I figured in the meantime, might as well see how it looks and uh, seal the carburetor up a little bit. I also got a new air screw as well. I'm going to go ahead and install that now. So the factory setting for the air screw is one and a half turns out from lightly seated. I'm going to turn this thing all the way in until it seats and then go one and a half turns out. All right, right there is seated all the way. I'm gonna go half, one, and one and a half. And so what the air screw does is it controls the mixture from closed to about eighth turn of the throttle. Ideally, with this two-stroke carburetor, you wanna be between one and three turns out. If you're below one turn out, you need to go larger. Yep, larger on the pilot jet. And then more than three turns out, you wanna go smaller on the pilot jet. And then last of all, we have the throttle stop screw. This is what controls the idle. And this screw needs to be set with the engine running. So I'm just gonna set it about where it was when I pulled it apart. And that should be, I wanna say like two or three turns out. Alrighty guys, that is gonna be it for the carburetor assembly. Turned out absolutely wicked. Definitely happy with it. Real quick, just gonna pick the winner of the giveaway from that last video. Go ahead and tally up the comments here. Looks like we've got 373. When I hit start, it's gonna pick a random comment from that video. All right, Tyler Reese says Honda. Right on, man. All right, Tyler, message me with your shipping address here on YouTube, and I will get this master cylinder kit over to you. Hopefully you can use it. If you guys enjoyed watching this carburetor get all decked out, make sure you smash that like button. Alright, thank you so much for watching everyone.